Now, actually not your fingers, but physical manipulatives that we give the kids. What's the most common physical manipulative? I think it's this. More schools and younger K-1 teachers use those flat circle counters, red on one side, yellow on the other side, than any I've seen when I go to schools, by a lot. Okay, now, really important question. Do they work well if you're showing me four? Yes. Do they work well if you're showing me five? Yes. The question is why? Ready? Do they work well when you're showing me nine? Okay, predict on your whiteboard or your paper, when you say to your average kindergarten kid in America, get out your counters, show me nine on your desk, draw a picture of what you think most kids draw. Most kids in America in kindergarten, when I say show me nine with your counters, I think when I say show me nine, that's what a lot of kids' desks look like. Go like this if you see nine. Go like this if you see nine. Okay, now count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Who went like this when I said, do you see nine? And they went like this. A bunch of people did. Well, why would you do that? Because I showed it the worst possible way. So is it easy for you to make a mistake? Yes. Can you tell quickly? No, why not? Humans can't subitize eight or nine. Subitize meaning know how many without counting. They can subitize five and below. Humans can do that. So if you were only worried about numbers to five, would circle counters be okay? Yeah, because a kid could go like this and no matter how you arrange them, they could tell it's five with practice. But even with practice, humans can't tell nine like that. They can't subitize it even with practice. Now, here's another way a lot of students would show you nine. Do you agree? Your more neat kind of students will line them up. Okay, do me a favor today. When I ask you to close your eyes or answer quickly, I'm trying to get you to assess your own thinking. I don't think we get change, meaningful change, until the person decides to change. So I need you to put you in a position where you're like, oh, I want to do it differently because that didn't even work for me. So why would it work for a five or six or seven or eight year old? Ready? I'm gonna get out my manipulatives. During the pandemic, we built these, we made them free. Ready? Close your eyes for me. And when I say go, open your eyes and show me immediately with your fingers how many. Ready? Go. Show me with your fingers how many. Go. Right away. Go. Go like this if you said 10. Go like this if you said 10. Go like this if you said 10. Go like this. Ready? Is it 10? Go like this if you want to change your answer. If I had done that, would you have gotten it right like in that one second? I bet you would have. When I did it like this, you can't subitize nine as a human reliably. You can't. It's not a human trait. Now, if I had put nine cubes all random on the page, would you have known it's nine? Absolutely not. Are there better and worse ways to show nine if you don't want me to turn into a counter? Yes, there are. Well, what works for you? That didn't work for you. This worked for you. Now, would this have worked for you? I bet it would have. Now, if I did this with a kindergarten kid a lot in K, am I like, Front loading, am I like sneaking in a third grade math facts that some kids don't know three times three is nine? There is no reason we can't lay the groundwork for later by picking the right manipulatives. Now, if I had my nine as circle counters spread out on my desk, how quickly could I as a teacher show three groups of three? 
Wouldn't I have to sit there and line them up so that you saw the three groups of three and the whole time, aren't I doing everything one at a time? And the whole secret to being good in math is to what? Think in groups, think in units. The key to large whole numbers is gonna be what? Tens, hundreds, thousands, it's place value. The key to fractions is what? Unit fractions, halves, thirds, fourths. Okay, what's the key to decimals? Again, units, place value. Decimals are not different from fractions. It's a different notation. It's a different way to represent a decimal fraction. So, big question, K2 math. What are your major operations in K2? Oh, somebody just showed me their whiteboard with a plus and a minus on it. Before that, a whole bunch of people went like this. Some people went like this. I knew exactly what you were thinking. You can get your kids to communicate without speaking. A math talk with a lot less talking. I believe that the, the phrase talk is cheap, never been more true than about a math talk. Talk is so cheap. It's not effective like communicating your thinking a different way. Now, what are the major operations in grade three and up? People are going like this. We all got that one and everybody hesitates. Some people went like this. That works. But you're trying to tell me multiplication division, right? Okay, what's the fundamental difference between add and subtract, multiplication, divide? What's the big difference? Show me. Show me. What's the big difference? Okay, here's what I think the major difference is. Ready? Is part, part, whole, part, part, total thinking important? Tell me about the parts when you're adding and subtracting. What can you say about the parts when you add and subtract? Now, here's an easier question. Tell me about the parts when you're multiplying and dividing. Somebody just said this. What did she mean? I said, tell me about the parts when you're multiplying and dividing. She went like this. Don't they have to be equal? Don't the groups have to be equal? Is that true about adding and subtracting? Tell me about fractions. Tell me about the parts and fractions. Is there a gigantic difference now between K2, add, subtract, third and up, multiplication, division, fractions? You move from parts that don't need to be equal to parts that need to be equal. So if you show nine with flat counters all spread out on the desk or on a piece of paper, you know what you're showing me? Ones. That's the group I don't want to be working in, ones. If I always show nine like this, will kids learn a number bond for nine? Yes. Which one will they become great at? Show me. Show me. That's the one they're going to be great at. Can you, if you're good, make sure they also learn other ones by looking at it that way? Will you have any kid, when I go, do you see a nine? They go, yep. I say, show me the number bun. Most kids will go like this. Do you agree? I actually want it even more specific. I want them to show it to me like this. Not like this. That raises so many questions when we teach. Should you start with a 10 frame like that or like that? Is there a go-to way to use 10 frames and five frames to start? Which would you do it? Show me. What's your go-to? Why? I see a lot of people going like this. I see people going like this. I see people going like this. I know what you're saying to me. You didn't have to speak. Why this? I agree with this. Why? Okay, who can describe that five for me? What would you say to a little kid if you're talking about that five versus this five? How would you describe that five? 
What word would you use for that five? Oh, it's the five frame what? On top? And how would you describe this one? Oh, it's the five frame on the bottom? Should we be teaching comparison keywords starting in K and one? Yeah. Okay. Same kid, kindergarten. Now, did everybody notice how quickly I was able to put the counters in my 10 frame? If this was real 10 frames and real unifix cubes, how long would it have taken me as an adult to load up those 10 frames? And could I do it in groups or would I have to do it in ones? Have to do it in ones. We're turning kids into counters by the way we teach, the methods we're pushing, and the manipulatives we're using. So there's just so much to think about in this world of AI and technology and all this other stuff. Okay, ready? Describe this five to me. I'm a kindergartner. What would you say? Would you say, oh, it's the five on the left? And what would you say about this one? Oh, it's the five on the right? Which will a kid understand better? Top, bottom, or left, right in kindergarten? How about first grade? How about second grade? Aren't there a lot of kids that still don't know their left and their right in second grade, third grade, fourth grade? Why are we doing that to them? Now, this has to come first. You always are gonna have a go-to way you start teaching, then it's a progression. If you get top bottom, will I just keep doing it this way for the rest of your life? No, I know. Is it important to see columns in math? Yeah, I gotta get start with rows. Why else are rows easier than columns at the beginning? Might you guess, even though you, don't, you haven't done the research? Can I use common sense or do I have to justify every single thing with a study and then I'm allowed to like misinterpret every way I want? No, common sense tells me what? Are kids more comfortable with horizontal rows or vertical columns? Why? Isn't it reading? Isn't it reading? Yeah, in our country, we read left to right. Reading, that's why we do it this way. Everybody okay with this? So if I'm a good teacher, I do this for nine, I do that for nine, and the kids learn this number bond inside and out, five and four. But after they've done that, what does it gain if every time I say, show me a number bond, every single time the kid goes like this? We need kids to know all the ways to make a nine. Everybody okay with that? And you'll know if you're a first grade teacher, when you try to teach the make 10 strategy, and I do a problem like this, if I do eight plus nine, and I say break apart the nine to make a 10, kids can tell me this. Thank goodness there's an emphasis on knowing your tens in kindergarten. So many kids now do know all the ways to make 10. Guess what any first grade teacher will tell you is hard about the make 10 strategy. It's not that part. Which part is it? It's that part. That's the one. So when we're teaching nine in kindergarten and first grade, is it so important to get at all the ways to make a nine, not just five and four?